Hello everyone. Welcome to another part of our Azure Fundamentals exam practice question series. Today we are starting to look from question number 458. Your company has an Azure subscription that contains several resources. You need to identify which department is responsible for the cost of each resource. What should you use? Your options are budgets, alerts, and tags. And friends, you should use tags to identify which department is responsible for the cost of each resource. Now tags in Azure are key value pairs that you can apply to resources, resource groups, or subscriptions to organize and categorize resources. You can assign tags like department finance or department HR to resources. This makes it easier to track usage and costs based on departments when reviewing cost analysis or generating reports in Azure cost management. Now folks, budgets are used to define and monitor spending limits, not to identify responsibility of who is going to own the cost. Then the alerts notify you about certain conditions like exceeding a budget, but do not help in categorizing resource ownership. Question number 459. You need to select the answer that correctly completes the sentence. Now your options are Microsoft IntraConnect, Azure Arc, Azure Front Door, Azure Policy. Which of them extends Azure compliance and monitoring to hybrid and multi-cloud configurations? And folks, the correct answer is Azure Arc extends the Azure compliance, governance, and management capabilities to hybrid and multi-cloud environments. It enables organizations to manage resources such as virtual machines, Kubernetes clusters, and databases across on-premise, multi-clouds, and the edge using a single control plane in Azure. Question number 460. What should you use to prevent traffic from an Azure virtual network from being routed to an Azure storage account via the internet? Your options are a network security group, a public endpoint, Azure VPN gateway, a service endpoint. Folks, NSGs help control inbound and outbound traffic at the subnet or NIC level, but do not guarantee that traffic to a storage account stays off the internet. So an incorrect choice. Public endpoint exposes the service to the public internet, which contradicts the goal. And Azure VPN gateway is used to connect on-premise networks to Azure, but it is not relevant to restricting traffic to storage accounts. This leaves us with option D, which is the correct answer, a service endpoint. Now, a service endpoint allows you to connect Azure services like Azure storage account directly to an Azure virtual network without routing the traffic over the public internet. This ensures that the traffic stays within the Azure backbone network, enhancing security and performance. Next question, friends. Again, you are presented with a sentence out of the four given options. You need to choose one option which correctly completes the sentence. You deploy an Azure resource. The resource becomes unavailable for an extended period due to a service outage. Microsoft will, your options are refund your bank account, migrate the resources to another subscription, credit your Azure account, send you a coupon code that you can redeem for Azure credits. Folks, Microsoft offers service credits as compensation in such cases. These credits are applied to your Azure account, which can offset future billing. Now, if you are interested in understanding how this works, there is a link on your screen. Go through the link and understand it in more detail. What additional resource is required by an Azure virtual machine? Your options are a virtual network, a service endpoint, Azure firewall, a public IP address. Folks, an Azure virtual machine must be connected to a virtual network to communicate with other resources, whether within the same VNet or across virtual networks. A service endpoint is optional and used to secure access to specific Azure services like storage, but it is not required for basic operation of a VM. Azure Firewall is also optional network security service that provides filtering and protection at the network level. And a public IP address is also optional and only needed if the VM needs to communicate with the internet directly. 
how many copies of data are maintained by an azure storage account that uses locally redundant storage your options are 3 4 6 and 9 friends when an azure storage account uses locally redundant storage it maintains three copies of the data these copies are stored within a single data center in the same Azure region to ensure high availability and durability. However, LRS only protects against hardware failures within the data center and does not provide redundancy across regions or data centers. For higher redundancy options, zone redundant storage or geo redundant storage would be needed. So folks, we had a similar type of question in the series already. If you have not watched the other parts, please make sure to watch them to understand the different type of variations of similar questions that you can encounter in the exam. Question number 464. You need to start Azure Cloud Shell. What should you use? Your options are the Azure Portal, Azure Command Line Interface, Azure PowerShell, and Azure Resource Manager ARM template. The primary way to launch Cloud Shell is through Azure portal. You can find the Cloud Shell icon at the top right corner of the portal. While you can use the CLI inside Cloud Shell, the CLI itself does not launch Cloud Shell. Similarly, Cloud Shell provides a PowerShell environment, but PowerShell itself does not start Cloud Shell. ARM template, as you would already know, are used to deploy Azure resources, not to launch Cloud Shell. So folks, if you are liking the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Again, you are presented with a fill in the blanks question. You need to complete the sentence by choosing the one of the four options. An Azure SLA is a formal agreement between Microsoft and a customer that defines, and your options are a commitment to deliver the features on a technology roadmap, a commitment to performance standards, the maximum scalability limits of an available infrastructure, the minimum scalability limits of an available infrastructure. And folks, the correct answer here is a commitment to performance standards. These standards typically cover metrics like uptime, availability, and connectivity for Azure services. The SLA outlines what Microsoft promises regarding service availability and the compensation customers may receive if the service does not meet those standards. Next question. You need to compare a company's cloud usage to industry standard best practices. What should you use? Your options are Azure Monitor, Azure Service Health, Application Insights in Azure Monitor, Azure Advisor. Friends, the keyword to answer this question is best practices. And for that very reason, we will choose Azure Advisor as the correct answer. Azure Advisor is a personalized cloud consultant that provides recommendations based on industry best practices. It helps optimize your Azure resources by focusing on key areas such as cost, security, reliability, operational excellence, and performance. You can use Azure Advisor to compare your company's cloud usage against best practices and receive actionable insights. Question number 467 is again a fill in the blanks question. And this time we are talking about Azure Cosmos DB is an example of which offering. Your options are platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, content as a service, software as a service. And folks, Azure Cosmos DB is a fully managed platform as a service offering. It handles the underlying infrastructure management tasks such as provisioning, patching, backup on behalf of the user. This allows developers and businesses to focus on building applications and accessing data without worrying about managing servers or infrastructure. Next question. You need to request that Microsoft increase a subscription quota limit for your company. Which blade should you use from the Azure portal? Now in front of you is a snippet from the Azure portal showing all the different services and options available to you. Now when you need to request a quota increase such as more virtual CPUs, storage or other limits for your Azure subscription, the appropriate place to do that is through the help plus support blade in the Azure portal. And how you do it? Select create a support request under the help plus support section and then choose quota as the issue type. Specify the region and resource for which you need the quota increase.
Question number 469. We are looking at a statement and the statement is an Azure service is available to all customers when it is in. Options are public preview, private preview, development and enterprise agreement subscription. When an Azure service is in public preview, it means the service is available to all Azure customers to use and test. Public previews allow customers to try new features and services before they become generally available. However, these features might not yet be fully supported for production workloads and could have limited functionality or service level agreements. Now, in a private preview, the service is only available to a limited group of customers by invitation or approval. It's not accessible to the public. During development, the service is being built and tested internally by Microsoft and is not available to customers. While EA subscription provides benefits like discount and contractual agreements, service availability is not limited to EA customers alone. Next question, folks. Authorization to access Azure resources can be provided only to Entra ID users. You need to tell whether this statement is right or wrong. And friends, this is an incorrect statement. Authorization to access Azure resources can be provided by other identity providers by using federation. A commonly used example of this is to federate your on-premise Active Directory environment with Entra ID and use this federation for authentication and authorization. So folks, before we proceed to question number 471, since we have already crossed 470 questions in the series, if you are someone who is short on time and has come across our video at last moment, then you do have option to gain access to the PDF version of all the questions that we have covered in the series till now. All you need to do is take the gold membership of the channel and then email me at devopshub2023 at gmail.com requesting the PDF copy. Azure has built-in authentication and authorization services that provide secure access to Azure resources. Again, you need to tell whether this statement is right or wrong. And friends, this is a correct statement. Microsoft Entra ID acts as authentication service managing user identities and validating credentials. And role-based access control provides authorization by assigning roles to users, groups, or service principles, determining what actions they can perform on specific resources. Next question. Your company plans to migrate all on-premise data to Azure. You need to identify whether Azure complies with the company's regional requirements. What should you use? Your options are the Knowledge Center, Azure Marketplace, the My Apps Portal, the Trust Center. Folks, Knowledge Center is a repository of FAQs and articles focused on troubleshooting and product information, but it does not cover detailed compliance topics. Azure Marketplace is a catalog of third-party applications and services available for use in Azure, but again, it does not provide compliance-related information. My Apps Portal allows users to manage and access enterprise applications they have permissions to use, but not relevant to our topic. This leaves us with the last option that is Trust Center, which is the correct answer. The Azure Trust Center provides comprehensive information about Azure's compliance certifications, privacy policies, and security standards. It allows organizations to verify whether Azure meets their regional, industry, and legal compliance requirements such as GDPR, ISO 27001, or HIPAA. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. I'll see you soon in the next part.